Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Aero, and in this episode, me and Marlene are checking out the Aruba Winery. This is quite a beautiful little short hike before we get to the spot we need to be. Wow, look at it, Lucy. <laughs> that is beautiful. What a beautiful shot. So we are here at the winery and uh, David is the owner and he's going to explain to us a little bit more about uh, the Aruba winery, the Aruba Alto Vista winery. Yes, it's a project that we started uh, a little bit over five and a half years ago. Um, now you see these plants, but um, five years, uh, five and a half years ago, there was nothing here actually. So we had to start from scratch, um, put in the seedlings. When the seedlings come in, they're just little rootstocks. Um, and we planted the first, uh, first part of the farm, actually also to see um, how it would go, because there was no experience locally really here with, with well, let me say commercial grape growing. No? The, you had some history maybe of some immigrants, especially Portuguese that maybe at their homes had some grapes. You had here some, some, um, some persons who did some tryout, but were not successful. So we were very skeptic too, if this was gonna work or not. And um, that's why too, we stayed really quiet about this project, as you know. Uh, we just came out two months ago with it because we wanted to first make sure that, you know, we could grow them good here, that they would give uh, good, uh, good fruit, that our harvest will be okay, but then especially that our wine <laughs> would, um, would be acceptable. So, uh, and that we would, should have enough stock because, you know, you can't open a winery with two little bottles because uh, otherwise really quickly you won't have any more. That's not the idea. So that's why we worked all these years diligently, quietly. And uh, now we thought was the right time actually to, to start this. And uh, that's why two months ago we opened for the public. How many sorts um, of uh, fruits you have? Well, actually, we have now uh, four types of grapes: okay. two white and uh, two red. The white is a uh, Chenin Blanc. It's uh, especially known in South Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a French Colombar. Uh, if it's French Colombar, you know where it's from. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have a Syrah or Shiraz, depends on which continent you're <laughs> pronouncing it. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, Tempranillo, which is a very typical Spanish uh, grape. Okay. That's uh, very good for this weather. Okay. So, uh, nice. but they're all doing very, very good. Very good, very good. So apart from the winery, they also have a rum distillery, which we are going to check out as well. And these are the sugar canes. We started here, not with this. We didn't start with grapes. We didn't start with sugar cane. Uh, oddly enough, we started with cows. Okay. We, from the start, we said we want to do something different. So we started with cows. 
Um, and actually, we started growing sugarcane as a good supplement for the cows. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, we, when you experiment, you do certain things, you have to do it for a while, and then you discover, okay, this doesn't work, mm -hmm. and then you make changes. So afterwards, we said, you know, the sugarcane grows really good here. What can we do with it? And visiting other islands in the Caribbean, where you see where they make rum out of it, you say, hey, why not? Uh -huh. So that's how the idea came to be about the... But we needed a special permit for this. And there was never a permit given in Aruba because there was no distillery. Mm -hmm. So this took a long legal battle, but then for me that's not a problem. <laughs> so, but when we were waiting for the permit, the possibility for the grapes came because of a coincidence, something that happened with another group in Curacao. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when we decided, okay, you know what? Let's go for the grapes. And I think like four months after we started planting, we got the permit. <laughs> so then we said, no, <laughs> we already started, so yeah, we're going to do, 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 do both things. Yeah. But in retrospect, it's not so bad because maybe you know that a lot of, uh, a lot of wineries, vineyards, they, they don't waste anything. So from the rest of the grapes after pressing, they make what in Italy they call grappa. Mm -hmm. Grappa and brandy are very close to each other. In Dutch, is, that's why they call it brand de wijn. Yeah. Because you brand the wijn. <laughs> yes. So, we are going to make a port also. Okay. So, nice. so, for that, we need to distill. Mm -hmm. So, then the distillery makes perfectly sense. Although, I must tell you that the rum is also a very, very interesting product that we're making here. So, uh, maybe if you want to come along, I'll show you a little bit of the process. Yeah. Yes, this is, uh, so we grow here, everything we produce is what we grow, no? Yeah. So we grow our own uh, sugar cane, here is where we mill it, yeah, so it from stocks it becomes, uh, becomes that to get the juice out. We use this again at the moment either with, uh, for, uh, for bettering the soil. Compost, uh, yes, yeah. mm -hmm. or or still is fire burnt. Yeah, so we use it to to heat our pot still, so we don't waste anything. Okay. Yes, and we're very 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 green. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to our distillery. We, this is where we make Red Star rum. It's called Red Star because of the Red Star in our flag. A lot of people have the misconception that you create alcohol during distillation. But distillation is a process that concentrates the alcohol that you already have. So we first have to make a wine, a sugarcane wine, then we can distill it. So outside we press the sugarcane, it passes through a filter, we measure all the sugar, make sure everything is up to our standards, then we pump it into these three fermentation tanks. In here, we're gonna ferment the sugarcane juice and make it into a sugarcane wine. And then we're gonna distill it to make the rum out of it. So how does distillation work? Distillation works on the basis of different boiling temperatures. So alcohol boils at a much lower boiling temperature than water. That means that the, molecule, the, the bonds between the molecules of alcohol are weaker than the bonds between the molecules of water. So when we start boiling the sugarcane wine in this pot, more alcohol is gonna boil and become a vapor or a gas than the water. So in here, we're gonna have a sugarcane wine with a concentration of around 10% alcohol. But when it starts boiling, more alcohol is gonna boil than the water. So we're gonna get a vapor or a gas which has a concentration of around 60% alcohol. The gas is gonna rise through this tube, pass over at the top, and then come back down here. This is a condenser. This is where we pump cold water, and it's like a jacket. So in here, there's a, inside of this steel tube, there's a, there's a copper coil, which doesn't actually come in contact with the water. 
the water just cools down the copper, and then the copper cools down the gas inside, and it becomes a liquid again. Mm -hmm. And the liquid is a spirit, and we collect it down here at this little spout. Now, there are certain things that come out during distillation. Certain things have different boiling points, so there's chemicals that will come out first, like a little bit of methanol, things like acetone, mm -hmm. things that you don't want in your rum. So these first things, we just discard them. First few percentage that comes out here, we don't use. That's what we call the heads, or the four shots. Mm -hmm. Then after that comes the hearts. As it, as it sounds like, the hearts, that's the part that you keep. It's the most important part. Mm -hmm. That's the rum that you actually drink. And then afterwards, you're gonna get some oils, we call them fusel oils. Tastes bitter, you don't want it. So, the last few percentages that comes out of the still, we don't use either. And that's what you call the tails. Now, you have a rum down here, but it's too strong. It has 60% alcohol in it. So we have to water it down to get it to a drinkable 40%, or else it might make your mouth a little bit numb, and you don't want that. So that's the rum. What do we do with the rest of the, the water or the juice in here? We're gonna cool it down outside, and then feed it to our plants, because we don't want to waste anything on the farm. Once we have the rum at 40%, we're gonna pump it into these two storage tanks. As the name suggests, this is where we store the rum. Now, we haven't been distilling for too long, but eventually we're gonna have so much rum that we're gonna have enough of it to age. And these are our oak barrels. These are actually old Jack Daniel barrels that they used to make whiskey in. But now we're gonna age our rum inside of it. Everything that comes out of a distillation process is water white, it has no color to it. But when you see whiskey in a store, the whiskey is gonna have a color. And where does the color come from? It all comes from the barrels. Have a seat, have a seat. Welcome to our tasting loft. The style of rum that we make here is a special style of rum because most of the rum in the world is actually made in a cheaper way using molasses. See, all rum is just any spirit that is made from the sugarcane. So it can be directly from the sugarcane like we do it here or you can use a byproduct of sugarcane. So you can either make rum out of white sugar or you can use the byproduct of sugarcane, which is called molasses. Now, white sugar is more expensive to use than its byproduct, so most people are not gonna make rum out of white sugar. But the problem with using molasses as your base for a rum is, if you can imagine all the flavors of the sugarcane, and then you process it down to get the molasses, you're not gonna have any flavors to work with. But if you make rum in our way, or as it's made in Brazil and Martinique and Guadeloupe, if you make rum this way, you're gonna keep all the flavors and all the aromas from the sugarcane in the rum. And to prove it to you, I'm gonna give you two rums to taste. So now on to the best part. On the left, you're gonna get a molasses-based rum, mm -hmm. and on the right, you're gonna get Red Star. And I want you to first smell it, smell the difference, and then okay. you can sip it. <laughs> so my turn. This one certainly smells stronger, but let's see. <laughs> it's so, it's strong. drink a, a cocktail using a molasses based rum, most of the time you're going to taste all the other ingredients in the rum. You're not going to actually taste the, the, the rum itself. 
you might taste the alcohol, but the rum is only 40% alcohol and then 60% flavors and aromas. So we want to prove to you that our rum is so, so flavorful and aromatic that you can even taste it in a cocktail. This is good. <laughs> wow, so refreshing. Mm. Perfect. All right, so for the next section of the tour, you guys are going to get a look of a video where you guys are going to see the history of the project. This shot right here was actually taken, I'd say about a year ago. So you guys see that building over there? That's where we were just were. That's, that's the rum room where you guys tasted the rum, got the drink. And currently we're in here. So seven years ago, is where we first started. So we cleared the land, as you guys can see. Then planted the grapevines. Then they start growing naturally. You see the first leaves over there. And after a couple months, well, actually the first two years, you're not going to get much fruit. You're not going to get enough grapes. They're not going to be of high quality enough. But after those two years is when you're going to start getting the good grapes, the grapes that you're going you're gonna to use for wine production. As you guys can see, this is something that requires a lot of labor. So we do everything by hand, no machines. And what we do is usually we bring students on vacation. They come here and help us with the, with the harvest. The plant we're currently harvesting in this video is the Chenille Blanc. It's one of the plants you probably saw earlier in the tour. As you guys can see, what you guys saw a couple minutes ago, very small, young grapes. But you guys can see, about, I'd say about eight months into the growing process of the grapes, how they start looking like. Now, once we transport it, we bring it. It's a 30 second ride, by the way, it's not long, but we bring it into the winery where we're firstly gonna start sort of milling, squeezing the grapes. So firstly, we get rid of the skeleton of the grape. You know? So we get all fruit and we also, it also squeezes the grape so you get juice out of it. Per year, we produce about, I'd say, 8,000 bottles, but we're currently growing, so that figure is supposed to be increasing in the following months. As you guys see over there as well, we have a couple of barrels. We also age red wine, in particular the Tempranillo. So we have a Tempranillo reserve, we put them into barrels. These are French oak. The ones we use for the rum or we want to use eventually in the rum is American oak. So there's a difference. This is French oak. And our next section right now is going to be time to taste the wines. So follow me. Now, again, we saw a lot about the wine. Now, if you follow me, we're going to walk upwards towards the wine tasting room. Wow, beautiful view too. This is a beautiful view. And there's another tour going on. So you can take tours here and afterwards do your wine tasting. Okay, welcome to Alto Vista Winery. My name is Hubert. I'm the certified sommelier in wines and spirits. Uh, today I am in charge of explaining some um, proteins and the tasting so of the wines beginning with the first wine all the way down we have French Colombard so French Colombard it's a great variety mostly uh, used in France to distill into brandy so in the Cognac region is called Cognac, in the Armagnac region is called Armagnac. Both are brandies. So Marlene 
is eating goat cheese. She never eats goat cheese and she is liking it apparently. <laughs> So I want you this time to have a zip of the Chanino Ranch, then have it with the Young Amsterdamer Dutch cheese. We are now going to go for the fifth wine. Fifth and last one. We wanted to thank David and his family for receiving us and at the same time congratulate them on a, such a beautiful and unique project for the island of Aruba. Last but not least, please remember to subscribe for more content coming your way. Bye bye folks.